So as a creator, if you're using a PC for your work, most likely you are running an unlocked processor. So whether you're using Intel system or AMD system, your processor can be overclocked. So that means that potentially you're sitting on a free performance, right? So as a creator, should you be then overclocking your CPU? What are some of the consequences and what are the actual real world performance improvements in Premiere Pro, for example? Well, in this video, you will find out right after this. Would you like to 3x your reach with your live streams while upping the production quality without spending a single dollar? Here's where Restream.io comes in. Restream is a powerful browser-based live stream tool that allows you to restream to multiple social media sites at the same time. But it also pulls all the chats from all the different sites and combines it into one chat so it's easy for you to keep track of all the messages from different platforms. And not just that, it also offers a very simple to use Restream Studio that lets you design your live stream and customize it to your your brand. Restream Studio makes it also very easy to invite in guests for your live stream even if they're on the other side of the world and there's much more. The best part of all that is that all that I've just mentioned comes with a free plan. If you're interested in more advanced features like streaming to Facebook pages, stream recordings online, stream pre-recorded videos, 6 plus stream participants, full HD streaming and more, then check out all the paid plans and choose which fits your budget. Check out Restream.io in the video description below. So first of all, what does overclocking your CPU mean? A very easy example of this is a car. If you buy your car from the factory, let's say like an Audi RS3 or BMW M5 or something like that, and after receiving the car, you can go to a corner shop or like a corner tuner, you know, business, and they can put a stage one, two or three or whatever tuning on it without changing any parts and you can get extra performance depending on a car and the, you know, engine that the car comes with, but you are actually able to get more performance and that is with any car you can buy from the factory. So now with the CPU, it is exactly the same. The CPU is meant to be running at certain, you know, clock speeds, certain speeds from the factory, but if you overclock the CPU, what that means is that you are telling the CPU to run faster than it's meant to run from the factory. In order to do that, you need a little bit of a skill or knowledge how to overclock the CPU. You need good cooling for your system and there is something called silicon lottery because not all processes overclock the same, even if they are exactly the same model. So two 10900K i9 processors from Intel might not overclock exactly the same from the factory. You might get a CPU that can overclock very, very well, and you might get a CPU that doesn't overclock very well. I've got one that doesn't overclock quite so well. So then, in order to test the actual performance increase and what it means, we needed a test bench or test setup. And here's where I want to say thank you to some of my friends in Intel, Aerocool and Asus for helping me do this project. Thank you Intel for sending out their 10900K for this project and Aerocool for sending out their power supply to power this test system. And thank you Asus for lending me this Z590 board. This is the TUF Gaming Z590 Plus Wi-Fi board. In order to overclock your CPU, you need a board that can do the overclocking. So thank you very much guys for providing these parts to provide valuable content for you guys to watch. Now, if you wanna know the rest of the system and what parts I'm using, I'm gonna leave them in the description below where you can find that out. But one of the other things I wanna mention is that we're using one of the best AIO coolers that are available in the market, if not the best in the world, and that is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 420 millimeter cooler over here, which is just insane. So then, I set out on a mission to test the test bench and the CPU at stock settings from the factory. All settings were set to default, bio settings set to default, so we can see how well does it perform out of the factory. After I got the baseline of the benchmarks, now it's time to overclock our CPU. Now I've spent the last two days trying to squeeze as much juice out of this CPU as possible. So what I managed to do is overclock this CPU all core at 5.2 gigahertz. So all of the cores run 
5.2 gigahertz at all times. To put it in perspective, the base clock for the factory setting is 3.7 gigahertz. All core boost out of the factory is 4.9 gigahertz and that is only for a limited time of maybe 50 seconds or so and then it down clocks itself to 4.4 gigahertz. And then the single core boost clock is 5.1 to 5.3 gigahertz, depending on a core, and it's not able to reach that all the time. But in our case, all cores are just running 5.2 gigahertz at all times. I managed to even push it to 5.3 gigahertz, but I didn't leave it there because at 5.3 gigahertz, I didn't manage to complete all the benchmark tests and it wasn't stable in some of the workloads. So we had to settle at 5.2 gigahertz. So then what are some of the performance improvements? So in Cinebench R23, in single core benchmark, we are gaining 6.2% in the overclock. In the multi-core score, we're gaining 5.2%. And this was one of those applications that I managed to get a stable performance even at 5.3 gigahertz and when running it at 5.3 gigahertz we managed to get up to 10% improvement in the multi-core speed. Geekbench 5 in single core test we are gaining 9.1% increase and at multi-core score we're gaining 6.1%. In Blender we're running two tests. One of them is a bit shorter and one of them longer renders. So we're running the BMW and Classroom renders. And in the overclock mode, the BMW render managed to get 19.1% increase over the stock settings. And in Classroom settings, we managed to get 22.3% improvement over the stock settings. And that is the highest in any of the benchmarks I ran and the highest increase I got. In Premiere Pro custom um, sequence export, we managed to get 10.2% increase over the stock settings. Just a little note of the Premiere Pro sequence or timeline, there was a lot of raw, 10-bit, 422, 420, 12-bit, raw, you know, 4K, 5K, 6K, and 8k raw file so we're putting lots of different files and codecs in there to see how well does it perform so it was a very complicated timeline now we know the increase of performance what are some of the consequences after the overclock first of all we are seeing much higher temperatures than running the cpu in stock in stock settings the cpu runs in very good temperatures but in overclock mode, we are running very close to the maximum temperature the CPU can run, which is 100 degrees in this particular model. So the temperatures are much higher and it's nothing to do with the actual cooler. It's just because the voltage and the wattage that goes through the CPU is just not able to cool it down before it actually heats up. Second of all, we are introducing instability. Now I saw so many blue screens of death, especially in testing and trying to run it stable at different voltages, different frequencies. There is a lot of blue screens of death. So at any point, the overclock of the processor can fail and you might just lose the progress of your work or whatever you were doing. Third of all, loss of warranty. If you run the processor in the overclock mode or overclock your processor, you are actually losing your warranty. Even though the manufacturers make the processors unlocked so you can overclock, they are not actually warranting your overclocking. Fourth of all, you are actually losing the longevity of the processor. The processor is most likely not going to be able to run that overclock at that same voltage forever. And the process is not going to last that long. So if you do the test of the processor or the same benchmarks a year or two or three or four later, most likely the test bench score is going to be much lower than what you actually gain when overclocking the processor at first. Also, when running the overclock, you're actually putting so much more voltage possibly through the processor and the wattage and heat, which just decreases the life of the processor. And last of all, you're going to be experiencing much higher power draws from the processor than in stock. So in the stock, this processor should be running at 125 watts, but I saw over 300 watts sometimes pulled from the processor, which is two to three times as much as it comes from the factory, which equals higher energy bills and it also equals 
lower performance per watt. So to put it in perspective, you can gain 10 to, in some applications, maybe 20% increase in the performance, but the power draw, the electricity bill for the processor, for the wattage will be two to three times higher than running this in stock. So the big question then, should you as a creator be overclocking your processor and is it worth it? The simple answer is no. No, you shouldn't be overclocking your processor and it's not worth it. So if you are a creative professional and as a creative, you're working for a living and this is your job every single day. You are doing video editing, photo editing, graphics design, visual effects, designing, whatever you're doing. And at any point during that day, if you experience uh, a crash of your system because of the overclock of the processor, it is just not worth it. Even if you lost only a minute or two or a little bit of your work, it's just not work worth it because it's most likely going to occur again and again and again. And just think of the worst case scenario. You're going to lose something that you've been working on for a whole day or whole week or whatever. Hopefully you press that Ctrl S button more often than uh, once a day. But that is just the worst feeling and the first consequences I can think of as a professional. You have to go back and you might be losing much more than actually the processor is worth. So let's say you're a professional and you earn maybe 100, 200, 300, maybe more a day. If you lose half a day's of work because you gain usually 10 to 20% performance of the processor when rendering, then imagine how much money you just lost because you overclock your CPU. It's just not worth it. And if you look at some of the biggest providers of professional workstations out there, Dell, HP, Lenovo, Puget Systems, none of them overclock your system and none of them give you even the ability to overclock them straight out of, out of the factory because they know and everybody knows. I know it. Everybody knows it. That it's unstable and it's not worth it as a creator. If you're doing this every single day for a living, it's just not worth it. The gains you're getting is not worth it. And last of all, the cherry on the top of the cake, I think, is that it's not wise to spend your valuable time overclocking your system. The time, maybe a day or two or even more, maybe you're just getting into it, it might take you a few days. It's not worth the time you might be able to earn money during that time and running the CPU just factory settings. I know some people say every creator should be fine tuning their creative tool and you know getting the best performance out of it you know because a carpenter will like sharpen their tools and I don't think this is apples to apples comparison because let's say you're a race car driver and as a race car driver you are not working on your car you are not making sure that the engine works better there's someone else doing that job your job is to get the car to the finish line as fast as possible and i think as a creator you should be doing exactly the same your job is to get this project done as best as beautifully as possible and get it to the client or to yourself or whoever gets the creation what you're working on as fast as possible and as best as possible. You just want the computer that works and gets you the best performance in the most stable form. And I do think rather than overclocking the CPU, if you need the more performance, you just upgrade your system to a better system. So now hopefully we can put this question behind us and you know the answer to the question whether you as a creator should be overclocking your CPU. Now, if you don't agree with me, let me know in the comment section below because I would love to hear from you and your point of view. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. That will actually make a difference. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome to Tech Notice. This is where you get the best bang for buck tech for you as a creator. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoy these videos or check out on the channel. There's plenty of videos like these available. Go check them out. What else do you have to say? I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.